Jim Simon's net worth, according to Forbes, is $28.1 billion, and he's the world's richest hedge fund manager. He's much richer than infamous hedge fund manager Ray Dalio, whose net worth is around $19.1 billion. Jim Simons founded the hedge fund Renaissance Technologies, which manages around $130 billion worth of assets of its clients. Compare with Ray Dalio's Bridgewater Associates, which manages around $140 billion in assets. Bridgewater Associates has 1,500 employees, while Renaissance Technologies has five times fewer employees, which is just 300. With only 300 employees, Jim Simons uses strategies that are only known to a few of its employees, the strategies that are based on mathematics. During Jim Simon's 30-year career, the hedge fund has made around $105 billion with a nearly 40% annual return. Jim Simons is a mathematics genius. He did PhD in mathematics from the University of California, Berkeley at just the age of 23. He then taught mathematics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Harvard University. Later on, he led the math department at Stony Brook University as chairman. He was so good at mathematics that many times National Security Agency asked him to break codes and IBM also asked him to work with them on encryption. He used his mathematics in the financial market and became the richest hedge fund manager. Want to know how a mathematics professor became the richest hedge fund manager in the world? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinary successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Jim Simons was born on April 25, 1938 in Brooklyn, Massachusetts. His father was Matthew Simons and his mother, Marcia Cantor. He was the only child his parents had. Simons developed an early appreciation for mathematics. When he was three years old, his father told him that their car could run out of gas and this greatly puzzled him. He wondered how a car could run out of gas if it could use half of its supply, then half of that, then half of that. He had, at such a young age, discovered one of Greek philosopher Zeno's paradoxes. Simons was drawn to deep contemplation, something he later credited for his success. While other mathematicians could solve mathematical problems quickly, Simons preferred taking time to think deeply before finding a solution. When his parents took him to nursery school, for example, Simons would go up on a tree in the backyard of the school during playtime and just observe other children. At age 10, he even sat on his bed for a long time, pondering the meaning of the phrase, pass it on. He eventually discovered its meaning, but by morning had forgotten the answer. As a teen, Simons never really enjoyed chemistry and physics, but he loved math and logic. He was also forgetful. At age 14, he got a job working in the stockroom of a garden supply store, but was demoted to sweeping the floor because he kept forgetting where things went. In fact, when he told his bosses that he wanted to join Massachusetts Institute of Technology after high school, they were incredulous. Simons, however, scored excellently in his school tests and got a strong recommendation from his teachers. He joined MIT and graduated in 1958 with a degree in math. He completed his studies in three years since he skipped the first year, going straight to the second. Three years after graduating MIT, Simons completed his PhD in math from the University of California, Berkeley at age 23. After UC Berkeley, Simons earned a teaching role at MIT. He worked there for a year before leaving to join Harvard University as an assistant professor. In 1964, he pulled some money with his father and two college friends to invest in a Colombian vinyl floor tile company. It eventually proved a great investment. Simons first worked at Harvard exclusively before receiving an offer to join the Institute for Defense Analysis, or IDA. The IDA was an organization affiliated with the National Security Agency and had an office at the Princeton Center. Simons worked with them for about three years, helping them crack codes. However, he was dismissed in 1967 because of his public criticism of the Vietnam War. In 1968, Simons found a new role as chairman of the math department at Stony Brook University. He chaired the department for 10 years, building it to one of the country's top math departments. He particularly did well at luring prominent, widely published math professors into Stony Brook. These included Detlef Grummel, Mikhail Grumov, and Jeff Cheeger. In 1976, Simons even won the Oswald Veblen Prize, the highest honor in geometry, for his math research. While at Stony Brook, Simons had developed an interest in financial markets. The investment in the Colombian factory he had made years ago had turned around a $600,000 profit. He and his friends invested in it with Charles Freefield in 1974. Freefield grew it tenfold in a couple of months. Afterwards, Simons was so intrigued, he began trading financial markets. In 1978, Simons left Stony Brook to start Monometrics, a firm that traded currencies. It was located on a strip mall near the Stony Brook campus. He would later change its name to Renaissance Technologies in 1982. 
Back then, many firms on Wall Street were not using computers for their trading, but Simon saw an opportunity in leveraging computational power in trading. He recruited Leonard Baum, a crypto analysis he met while working at IDA, to create mathematical models to trade currencies. Baum did develop some models, but abandoned working with them. Markets in the late 1970s and early 1980s were very one-way, and the US dollar was fundamentally weak. Hence, it was easier to make money using fundamental analysis to short the dollar, which Baum did. However, Simon still wanted to pursue trading based on mathematical models, so he brought on someone else, James Axe, an award-winning algebraist from Cornell University. When Axe saw Baum's models, he knew they could be used for trading currencies and commodities. Simons gave Axe his own account, Axcom Ltd. Axe built on Baum's models, enhancing their predictive ability to identify market correlations they could profit from. With the new improvements, Renaissance did well, and in 1985, Axe convinced Simons to move the fund to Huntington Beach, California. By 1988, outside investors were interested in putting money into Axcom. Simons and Axe decided to transition Axcom into a new fund that they named Medallion. They then started accepting outside money to invest in Medallion. At first, Medallion posted mixed results. In 1988, it was up 8.8%, .8%. then in 1989, it recorded a 30% drop between the beginning of the year and April. Alarmed, Simons wanted to stop trading and to do some research on the models. It was his natural reaction as a contemplative person. Axe, however, pushed to keep trading. Simons asserted his authority as the larger shareholder and a disgruntled Axe left. The fund ended the year down 4.1%. After Axe left, Simon tapped into the expertise of Elwin Burlkamp and Sander Strauss to overhaul the fund's models, refining them to capitalize on short trades. Simon's opined that while the market was indeed largely efficient, there were brief periods of inefficiencies that could be leveraged for profit. He called these signals and built mathematical models to identify them and make trades off them. After a six-month overhaul, he put Burlkamp at the helm of Medallion and began short-term trading. The results were great. In 1990, Medallion returned 56%, then 39.4% in 1991, 34% in 1992, and 39.1% in 1993. Medallion reached $270 million assets in 1993. Simon stopped taking outside money for Medallion that year. Medallion earned 70.1% in 1994. Simon spent the remainder of the 1990s strengthening Renaissance by hiring top-tier mathematicians, physicists, and geometers. He shunned people with a Wall Street experience, preferring algebraists with a strong background in scientific and mathematical thinking. He also increased the firm's ability to harness data, growing Renaissance's computational power 50-fold between 1994 and 2000. In 1995, Medallion returned 38.3%, then 31.5% in 1996, 21.2% in 1997, 41.5% in 1998, and 24.5% in 1999. In 2000, when the S&P 500 was down 10.1%, Medallion returned a whopping 98.5%. Renaissance at the time had 148 employees. Simon spent the 2000s enhancing the quality of Renaissance's staff and refining its mathematical models. Medallion returned 33% in 2001. Simons also spent the 2000s buying out outside investors from the Medallion Fund and establishing new funds for them. He bought out the last outside investor in Medallion in 2005. Today, the fund's assets are entirely those of Renaissance owners and employees. In 2005, Simons created the Renaissance Institutional Equities Fund, or REIF. Unlike Medallion, which does short-term trading in different asset classes, REIF only invests in U.S. stocks and holds them for months. In October of 2007, Simons launched the Renaissance Institutional Future Funds, or RIF, for commodity investments. That year, the fund's assets more than doubled, reaching $32 billion. Renaissance would go on to launch two other funds, Renaissance Institutional Diversified Alpha, RITA, and Renaissance Institutional Diversified Global Equity Fund. Simons retired as CEO of Renaissance in January 1, 2010. He, however, stayed on as a non-executive chairman. He stepped down as chairman in 2021. The firm has 300 employees, 90 of whom have scientific PhDs. As of September 2022, Simons is ranked by Forbes as the 48th richest person in the world with a net worth of $28.1 billion. He's considered one of the best investors of all time because of the incredible record of the Medallion Fund. 
Simons has donated more than $2.7 billion to charity through his foundations. In 1994, together with his wife Marilyn, Simons launched the Simons Foundation, a charitable entity that supports advanced research in math and physics, the life sciences, autism research, and education and engagement. The foundation has made several donations to support education and research in universities, such as over $100 million donation to UC Berkeley and over a $170 million donation to Stony Brooks University. Through the Simons Foundation Autism Research Initiative, Simons supports autism research and outreach efforts. In 2004, Simons launched Math for America, a nonprofit which provides higher salaries and graduate learning scholarships to math and science teachers. This way, Simons hopes to improve teachers' training and motivation, leading to better outcome in terms of STEM skills among U.S. high school students. Simons played a big role in the establishment of the 130-acre Avalon Park in Stony Brook. He's also a big supporter of healthcare initiatives in Nepal. Jim Simons was a smart man, and from the start, he was good at mathematics. Many technical people don't focus on earning money, but in his case, he used his abilities to earn money. He created the Medallion Fund and then Renaissance Technologies and used his mathematics skills to learn the patterns and cycles of financial markets. He somehow cracked the financial market and became the most successful hedge fund manager ever. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.